Keep your life. Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. Merry Christmas Eve Eve. Happy Festivus. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's a Festivus for the rest of us. I just, I don't get that <laughs> show, man. Yeah. Oh, fair enough. There's like one funny person, and he's not on camera very much. And other than that, it's three people whining. <laughs> I don't know. You either like it or you don't, man. It's just yeah. one of those things. I uh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> so. I don't. Um, so uh, Liberty Larry was telling me right before we started recording that the this pandemic did not kill enough people. Man, I tell you, there are <laughs> folks everywhere right now, like on the street, in the in the the Dollar Generals, and the shopping malls, and the grocery stores. Like there mm. are people. Everywhere, yeah, everywhere. My, you can't get away from them. Yeah, my sister-in-law <laughs> went to Walmart today and went, "Oh, I bet that sucked." Dude, I, I don't <clears> even <throat> want to think about. I wouldn't even consider. You couldn't pay me. Yeah, that's <laughs> more or less what I was thinking too. Like, not um, gonna do it, man. Yeah, my my issue on today was that there people didn't seem to be in a hurry, oh, or yeah. or there were enough people that were not in any kind of hurry to yeah. get wherever they were going. Yeah, that. I had to drive very slowly everywhere that I went. Everywhere today. you went, <laughs> yeah. Wow. I was like, "What's going on up there?" And then that person would, and they're like, so one time it was this big van with a whole bunch of lumber and ladders tied to the top, and I'm like, "Okay, well, that yeah. Yeah, makes he, sense." He shouldn't like, be he, doing yeah, ninety. Yeah, yeah, like it, you know, lumber's <laughs> bouncing around and so forth. I'm like, "Okay, I understand why that guy's going slow." And then he he gets into the turn lane. I'm like, "Yes." Yeah. Now it's time to go, right? Yeah. <laughs> it did not work out that way. Yeah. The person behind him didn't feel like going any faster than he'd been going. <laughs> well, we already started at this speed. Let's <laughs> yeah. just keep it on the go. <laughs> yeah. I, I have set my cruise control, and I'm keeping it here. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah. man. It was, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I hate, I mean, like I say, I, it's not nothing against Chris. I just hate this time of year, man. Every year. Yeah. Like, it's, it's all this hustle and bustle is not for me. Well, I... I also realized that I could be better about avoiding it if I planned ahead at all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I wasn't a terrible procrastinator, that I probably wouldn't have to deal with this quite so much. Yeah. Um, but I am a Christmas Eve shopper. Oh, dude, no, no, not me. God, yeah. I don't want to be anywhere near a store come Christmas Eve. <laughs> well, I don't want to either. I just put myself <laughs> but, in this position. But you're in where, that position, uh, yeah. yep. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I probably should get that person a gift. Yeah. You had to uh, wait until Mary's water broke to go buy your gift. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I don't know where to start today. Oh, let's just dive on in. Dive into what? We know. can do a little, uh, uh, little flashback review kind of thing. Start off with a with a clip to make us feel good. All right. <laughs> um, so we have been talking about the Afghan drone bombing and how they're. Uh, you know, the family that died, seven kids, and all that, yeah. and um. Sounds very positive, doesn't it? Oh, right. yeah. well, anyway, um, so uh, we predicted that there would be no accountability, and then the Pentagon released a report saying that they weren't holding anybody accountable. And then um, we get this clip from uh, John Kirby, um, who's the uh, the Pentagon spokesliar. Uh, I believe it's the Pentagon spokesliar, yeah. um, Department of Defense. I don't know, one of them. Something like that. Yeah. Um, and uh, so he he's being uh, he's being asked some questions about this, and and these are his responses. How does it strike you that no one is held accountable? Because I know how it strikes a lot of people around the I world do. that you can get away with murder and nobody's punished for it. I do understand that. We, we, we appreciate that. Not everybody's going to uh, support this decision. Uh, what I can tell you is we looked at this thing very, very comprehensively. And again, we acknowledge that there were procedural breakdowns. Processes were not uh, executed the way they should have been. But it doesn't necessarily indicate that, uh, that an individual or individuals have to be held to account for that. But look, uh, is there, this is, is one... There dis- Discipline inside the Pentagon at all? I mean, maybe there are no charges brought up, but is anyone demoted or disciplined for what happened that what day? We're, what we are going to do, there's, no, there's not going to be individual discipline as a result of this, Willie. But what we are going to do is learn from this, uh, and we're going to enact and improve our procedures and our processes to try to make sure this doesn't happen again. 
Well, that's refreshing. Uh, the The last part of that is what really gets me. I mean, the whole the whole deal's bad. No, Don't that's the best part. Don't you understand <laughs> that we're going to look at these procedures and make sure that this kind of thing doesn't happen again? Well, the fact that you can have like, so do they ever discipline anybody in the Pentagon? I, I can't imagine that they ever discipline anybody for anything in the Pentagon. Oh no! Because um, if there was ever a moment. Daniel Ever. Hale's in jail for talking about this. <laughs> well, there you go. So, so there you go. That's that's your discipline. The people that get disciplined in the Pentagon are the ones who are the whistleblowers do, who do the right thing. Yeah. Well, I I the part that really gets me is the um, acknowledging that there were mistakes. Uh, there, you know, procedures broke down. The, the you know mistakes were made, but that doesn't necessitate that any should anyone should be held accountable for that. Yeah, right. Uh, I mean, that's I mean, what he said. That is, it's <laughs> like that's insane. Yeah. So no accountability, and not only are they not bringing charges, which this was an interesting point there at the end when the reporter asks him. Um, now I understand that you won't be bringing charges. Okay. But is there any disciplinary action? No, yeah. none whatsoever. None, nothing. Zilch. That, that just, that blows my mind. Mm-hmm. And, and the fact that, that we as a country would allow our government to do something like this. And, and to, it's not like, it's not that big a deal. Like, I mean, this, I mean, this story has not gotten a whole lot of play since all of this. I mean, it had some play in the beginning and it's just kind of faded off. Yeah. Like, to me, even if you buy into the whole American empire idea that we're the world leaders and so forth, this reflects very, very poorly on us. Well, exactly. This is something that should be a united front. So we're obviously very anti-war and very anti-interventionist mm-hmm. on this podcast. But even people who believe in w- that what we're doing is right over there should should be upset about this. Not anti-war. Pro-peace. Pro-peace. Whatever. <laughs> I, like, I like to be for things more for than things against them. For things than against them. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, at any rate, like, I mean, even if you think that we're doing the right thing by intervening in these countries, Mm -hmm. you've got to realize that this doesn't help your cause at all. Yeah. Like this, this does nothing but, but hurt us Mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. It just creates a bad image as the clip started off. It gives the impression that you can get away with murder in this country. Yeah. And yeah. Well, and clearly you can. Well, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it, it well, as long as you work for the Pentagon. Yeah, as long as you're yeah, exactly. Yeah, Not, it won't even get disciplinary action mm-hmm. taken. <laughs> yeah, I you know I mean he should have said well there will be a memo put in their file or something like something well, right and, like, <laughs> like I had yeah, said yeah. Uh, the other day I was like it, you would think that they would have at least like lied and been yeah. like been like you know oh yeah the the you know we're not going to press any formal charges but heads are going to roll you know behind yeah. the scenes yeah because then someone will get a stern talking to yeah yeah, yeah. exactly like uh, but no he's just I mean that's just how open they are with it that mm-hmm. they they know that there's going to be no repercussions so who cares yeah well i mean this is one of those uh, one of those issues that actually i guess it's one of those issues with our republic to at the core is that the the only group that holds government accountable is government yeah and they're all on the same team so (laughs) well and that's just it i mean especially when you're talking about inside the pentagon Mm -hmm. like because and that's probably the whole reason is they don't want to stir the boat inside Inside the boat, yeah. per se, you know. You rely on the police to police themselves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. And that hasn't gone very well in a specific yeah. <laughs> way either. Well, exactly. Yeah. So. Uh, I Yeah, I don't know. This one, it, uh, it just... It's one of those things that just makes you mad. It's <laughs> Yeah, it's exactly what I expected, but it's still, to it's still just really disappointing. Yes, to, to see it come to its logical end still makes you angry thumbs down pentagon thumbs down, <laughs> thumbs down. nice yeah. Yeah. So. if you're listening <laughs> yeah right and i'm sure they are oh yeah, yeah. Some, well actually yeah i wouldn't be surprised if they were <laughs> yeah no i'm sure they are <laughs> like i'm not being sarcastic there yeah. you hear that nsa yeah. um i yeah um so i was this is kind of off track of what we were talking about talking about yeah um but i I wanted to bring up on the podcast just to get people thinking about this what i was talking to you about the other night about my my recent revelation over about 
politics over the last many years. Yeah. And I would say that like a, you know, a part of it is this, the COVID thing has made it, has, has brought the state of fear thing front and center. Yeah. Like uh, it's very obvious. I mean, it's, this has always been the case that, um, that the government manipulates the people through fear. Yeah. Um, but as particularly with this COVID, because it's been blown so far out of proportion uh, of anybody who's paying attention. Yeah. Um, I mean, at least when you're well, talking about terrorism or something like there's big explosions and you know, yeah. s- stuff like that to make you feel at least, even though that is obviously a threat that was blown way out of proportion as well. Um, it at least, you know, gives you the impression of that, you know, that there is something really at risk. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and I suppose like at the very beginning of the COVID thing, that was also the case. It was the but, very beginning. There was, there were reasons to be concerned yeah. and, and we acknowledged all of that mm-hmm. at the time. Like, yeah. I mean, we talked about how, you know, this could be really bad, Yeah. Um, but it, we found out pretty early on that it those, wasn't so bad. <laughs> those, those fears were not warranted, you yeah. know, um, not to that level, not to the mm-hmm. level. And, and that's what makes this so crazy is like, it's, I mean, it's just blatant, bold-faced lies. Yeah. Um, at least coming from your media. Yeah, anyway, if you say the same thing enough, it becomes the truth, whether it's true or not. Exactly. And th- that's certainly the case here. We'll have a little example of that later on, too. Yeah. Um, but uh, the the thing that I had been thinking is how the major parties like manipulate this or or how they work with this. And so my revelation was that over the past, I don't know, 10, 20 years, um, each party has selected somebody to try and make you afraid of them. Yeah. And uh, for the most part, the Republicans have been trying to make you afraid of foreigners. Yeah. And the Democrats have been trying to make you afraid of Republicans. Yeah, yeah. And this has shifted a little bit with COVID, so now you've got the Democrats trying to make you afraid of, of illness and yeah. the Republicans trying to make you afraid of Democrat politicians. Yeah, but even the Democrats are still pushing the evil Republicans thing well, yeah. really hard. Yeah, um, I mean the, they're trying to kill your grandma by well, leaving their and the state Jan- open. Well, the January sixth stuff. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Um, I mean that's, but that's, I mean that's on full display. Mm-hmm. I mean that's that's, I, I blow it off all you want, but that's like they're pushing that as a you know mm-hmm. the domestic terrorism threat. Yeah, and and it it's getting. I mean, they've already claimed libertarians were that a long yeah, time yeah. ago. So, I mean, uh, I mean, and that's that's really where the the real danger lies. Not that there's not. I mean, there's certainly danger in in the blame the foreigners yeah. as well. Oh yeah. Um, but I see, you know, the other side of this: the blame the Republicans. The the Republicans are evil or yeah. scary yeah. or whatever. Um, is being far more dangerous because. At least the the Republican fear is outward facing, and the Democrat fear is trying to get you to uh, fear your neighbor, yeah, and your coworker, and you know, well, it, y- your it, friends and it, your family, and well, it flirts with starting a civil war. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, I mean, well, it's, it's, I don't know. To me, it just seems very Stalin esque. Yeah, like you get them all um, pointing at each other and and yeah. um, and use the people against the people. Yeah, your, um, your neighbor is your is the person that's going to mm-hmm. turn you in for right. You know whatever the bogus claim is. Yeah, so you, know. you got the one side thinking that their neighbor is a terrorist, and the other side thinking that their neighbor is a, a stooge of the state that might turn them in at any time. Yeah, exactly. And um and it it really it really breaks down the society in a way that, I mean, I don't think that I, that I really fully understand how the ramifications. Yeah. Of that. Well, the, the scary thing is, is we've seen this play out in history mm-hmm. before. Yeah. I've read the Gulag Archipelago. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could say better than me, but I mean, yeah. the history is littered with, with situations just like this, that, mm-hmm. that end really badly. Yeah. Um, which is why we've got to like, wake up and do something mm-hmm. about like this. I mean, this does have to stop. Like, yeah. Well, and the, the, the thing is going back to just like the, the full government fear thing is that there's never an end to it. Yeah. And it, you don't, you don't comply your way out of it. There is no, there is no 
um, lock down for two weeks to flatten the curb, and that'll be it. Yeah. Um, exactly. There is no wear your mask for three months or six months. I don't remember how long he said. Yeah. Um, there is no wear your mask for some period of time, and then we'll be out of this. Yeah. There is no go out and, and we'll get 80% of the population vaccinated, and, and we're done. No. It, um, it never ends. This is this will and, – and the thing is, especially talking about the fear with COVID and whatnot, mm-hmm. the government can't fix these problems. Even, yeah. even if COVID had been – as bad as we feared in the beginning, mm-hmm. government couldn't have fixed this. Yeah, like it's it's this isn't something that, and, and I think we did talk about that at the time, but it's good enough to talk about it now. Like even yeah. if it had been everything we were afraid of, mm-hmm. government couldn't have stopped it. Yeah, it, it just government doesn't, cannot fight a virus. Exactly. There's just there's no it's they're not capable of doing it. They can't even effectively fight terrorists. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. As per our last clip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. And, and so the, uh, the point is that if you want this to end and I hope that, I hope that you do. Um, if you want this to end, the only thing to do is stand up and say no. Yeah. Like not, not even just not comply, but, do something like this, like what we're doing here. Yeah. Like so really speak out against it. Yeah. Um, when you have the opportunity and there are people around, make comments. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the that's the only, I mean, that has to be normalizing this not being okay yeah. is what has got to happen. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, just accepting it as the new normal. It, it will become the new normal if, if everybody does that. Well, and it, recently um, I was at a Christmas party. And, uh, the host, um, gave some introductory words, you know, and, uh, and that was the, one of the things that he said is like, you know, the, the world has changed. Yeah. Like only if you let it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I didn't want to interrupt cause it's his party. Right. It's, yeah, <laughs> but, it's um, deal, yeah. but I mean, but that was my thought at the time. Like, no, yeah. the, the world's only changed if you've allowed it to. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't want the world to change, and he did make a comment that he didn't feel like it was necessarily a positive change. Yeah, yeah. A, a good thing, but um, that the world had changed. Well, if, if you don't think that it's a positive change, yeah. you can stop this. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, absolutely. Play your part, man, yeah. and, and stand up and say no. Yeah, absolutely. We all have, there's there's something everybody can do to fight with this, mm-hmm. whether it's one, like, like your, um, like I say, there's plenty of people in positions of power and even people who aren't in particular positions of power. Mm-hmm. There's always something you can do to play your part, to push back. Yeah. Um, there just, there always is. So just find out what your thing is to push back with and just do it repeatedly. Yeah. And, and figure out how far you want to push. I mean, I, I, um, I saw a clip of uh, some guy that was uh, wearing um, women's panties over his face on a plane. Yeah. As a, <laughs> as a, as a, a protest to you. the mask yeah. mandate. Absolutely. And he's like, hey, it meets the definition of a mask. It's the cloth covering, et cetera. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. it, you know. Um, and they ended up uh, throwing him off the plane anyway. Yeah. And then several other people just got off the plane. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Be that person that follows. That, yeah. That just, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, and I, I did, <laughs> it depends on, like, I really wanted to get home when I was leaving New Jersey, but, oh, yeah. uh, you know, I, like, I flirted with getting tossed off that plane, too. Yeah. Um, considering what had just happened by challenging the. Yeah. And, you know, make your comment. I mean, all I was doing was talking. I kept my mask on. I mean, I, yeah. you know, and I almost feel bad about that. But, yeah. you know, there's. Uh, only so far that I was willing to push at that time. Um, but, yeah. but I mean, I, I absolutely like the last eight rows in that plane knew exactly what I thought. Yeah. Um, absolutely. and I made it a point to say how absurd this whole thing was and how we all knew that this didn't do anything. Absolutely. And you know, so why be so militant about enforcing it and yeah. so on? I, I want to know more about Panties Guy, man. So where they like, where did he get his underwear from? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't really remember the story that well. Oh man. Um, I just thought it was I, what I thought was interesting about. I mean, I thought it was funny. Like his, his point yeah. was like, if it's absurd, make it like obviously make it absurd. absurd. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, but uh, the the thing that struck me about it was the other people getting off the plane. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. That was. Uh, 
Yeah. That was the, they were better than him in a lot of ways, I yeah, think, because yeah. they had they weren't getting thrown off the plane. They yeah, weren't getting they carried made, off the plane. They made the choice. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think it was, I want to remember the airline. I think it was United, but I'm, I'm not 100% on that. Yeah. I don't want to <laughs> disparage United if it wasn't them. Yeah. Um, so sorry if it wasn't them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, um, but then you, you have... Um, you have important officials asking, what's the big deal with your freedom? <laughs> like this. This is a pandemic of the unvaccinated. The yeah. unvaccinated. Not the vaccinated. The unvaccinated. That's the problem. And so everybody talks about freedom and not to have a, to have a shot or have a test. Well, guess what? And so how about patriotism? How about making sure that you're vaccinated so you do not spread the disease to anybody else? What about that? What's the big deal? The big deal is what we were just talking about, that this <laughs> never ends. Exactly. There's always an excuse to take your freedom away. I, I, I'm just, you talk about patriotism, and it just amazes me that, I think uh, that guy, a president of the United States, yeah, of this country, yeah. would talk about patriotism in the same little paragraph where he's talking about who cares about your freedom. <laughs> right. Well, I think that the guy wearing the underwear as his mask is more of a patriot than he is. <laughs> well, yeah. I think that, I think that you're right. I mean, and, at least he's making a stand. Like, yeah. You know, and there's like <laughs> the pandemic of the unvaccinated meme. Oh man. Uh, that's months old, man. That nobody believes that anymore. No. And, um, <laughs> Yeah. So but Biden was, can't get it out of his head. Right? No. So. But the one that irritates me the most is where he talks about um, it's the, blaming the unvaccinated and that it's, you know, your patriotic duty not to spread this to other people. But, but yeah, just take the vaccine so you don't spread it to others or however yeah, he said However that. he worded it, because yeah. he definitely said it in that clip. And it, every time I hear it, it just irritates me to no end because like that is not the science doesn't support that yeah like i mean you want to talk about science like the science absolutely doesn't support that mm -hmm. uh, i mean you can spread it and catch it just as easily with the vaccine as without yeah like i mean there's just there uh, there's no dispute in that nobody is disputing that nobody's serious nobody's serious well Fair enough. <laughs> Seri serious people don't dispute that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I haven't figured out who serious people are exactly well, yet. I, it's just one of those things that comes up in the news a lot. Serious people don't. <laughs> right. Who, who are these serious people? Yeah. Um, We're yeah, the serious people. <laughs> the Yeah, the patriotic thing is just so out of... I mean, I, I think he might need to pull out old Webster's and look that up again. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, or maybe he... It could just be that Joe Biden has a very different idea of what patriotism is than I do. Well, it's very clear that that's the case. <laughs> yeah, well, I, okay, fair. Um, rather than he just doesn't understand what the word means. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah he's just in a different place than you are. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, uh, I, th I think it's a, yeah, it, and it's not just on the left, by the way. This, it reminded me when I heard that. It reminded me of my argument with our representative about um, the uh, constitutional amendment that he was supporting to um, to make it illegal to burn uh, the American flag. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is something I still get in arguments with right now about mm -hmm. with people about. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's I get that that you feel so strongly about this mm -hmm. flag, yeah. but that flag represents the freedom to do whatever I want with that flag. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. I it. mean, it's that's like, what that flag represents. You've got so wrapped up in the symbol that you forgot what the symbol is. Exactly. What it's a symbol of. Exactly. Um, And yeah, I think it's the same thing here. Like you don't, the point of this country, it was intended to be focused on individuality and individual freedom and individual choice and making the most of your world without the government getting in the way. Yeah, absolutely. And he's talking about patriotism in the exact opposite sense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And uh, he's got patriotism and conformity confused. Yeah. Like he does. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's, that, he's confused those two words. Authoritarianism. That right. too. Yeah. Um, and people get mad about using that term uh, that this is authoritarian. It's, you know, we talk about Fauci, like Fauci's just an authoritarian. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and but well, how else do you describe him? And and of course, well, you know, Fauci's got his thing. Of, well, I don't make any policy. Yeah. But you have a huge influence on it. Oh, absolutely. Right now, for yeah. some reason. <laughs> for some reason. Yeah. And and this is what you advocate. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's not like you get up there and you just uh, say, well, there's you know, such and such a percentage chance of transmission with a mask and without a mask. You, there's such and such a percentage chance of ending up in the hospital or dead with the vaccine as opposed to without the vaccine. You're not just going up there giving facts and figures. You're going up there and saying what we need to do <laughs> is we need to require masks in all pub, uh, you know, all cl- enclosed spaces everywhere in the United States. What we need to do is require people to get this vaccine. Yeah. yeah. What we. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know how. The unvaccinated. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you how you can look at that and not think of it as being authoritarian. Yeah. Um, the idea that you have the best plan and that you are perfectly happy to use the coercive power of government to impose that best plan on me yeah. is authoritarian. Well, and the reason people get so squeamish about that word is because they don't want to believe that we live in a country that's okay with that. Yeah, well, it's time to wake up then. Exactly. I mean, I don't no, know how I, you're like <laughs> well, looking exactly. around. But that's the reason that people get squeamish about that word mm. because I, I see it all the time too. Like you'll be talking and you start using that word and it's like, oh, whoa, well, I don't know. But that's, a, that's a little extreme. Well, no, given the situation, it's not. Mm. Yeah. And we have to accept that, that, that we're in dangerous road here. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, it's... Um, one of the philosopher saints, I don't remember St. Francis, St. Augustine, one of these people, um, was talking about uh, interpretation of the Bible, kind of like the canon dogmatic uh, approach to what the Bible means. And, and he said um, something along the lines of, uh, when your interpretation of the Bible is contradictory with the world that you observe around you, it's time to reinterpret the Bible. Yeah, And it's the same thing here. Like, if your idea of what this nation is... Yeah. It's contradictory to the world you're observing around you. Yeah. It might be time to reassess that. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. You don't want to believe that this is authoritarian, that this is becoming an authoritarian country. I would say has become oh, an yeah. authoritarian country. But you don't want to believe that. Then I understand why you don't want to believe that. That's not a good place that you... I, no. Like, you know, it's not a good place to go. It's not where you want to be. Um, but look around you. Yeah, yeah. Like really, <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah, especially parts of this country. I mean, we're a little insulated down here in the south. Well, even so, but well, I would say even as insulated as we are, I'm not happy with the state of things. No, um, but I mean, there are places in this country that's really got it bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, there are, um, but yeah, even down here where we're at, like I'm not happy with the state of things. Like, there's all kinds of stuff that's <laughs> going on that's not okay. So. You have a look. <laughs> I, I thought there was something wrong with the recording, but it's fine. Okay. It's fine. I just I misread some numbers. It's all is well. <laughs> all is well. <laughs> all, all is well. That is good. Um, all right. So one more little vaccine thing, and then uh, we can move on to what you wanted to talk about with the um, traffic. With the police. Stops, yeah. With the um, po Okay, so... I don't know. Do we just play this whole clip or do we divide it up? Man, I say we just play it in its entirety. Let people get a feel. Get it for all it, in context. Get it all and, in context, okay. and then we'll 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 talk about it. All right, let, let's uh, let's play this clip about the um, the vaccines for kids, all little right. kids, little kids, little kids, the little ones, and then we'll then we'll talk about this. Today, a new setback for families with kids five and under. Pfizer reporting some disappointing data from a trial that could delay the shot even further. CBC's Meg Terrell covers medicine for us and science. Meg, what happened here? Yeah, Shab, Pfizer's been testing much lower doses of its vaccines for kids under five, two doses of three micrograms each, compared with 10 micrograms for kids five to 11 and 30 for those 12 and older and adults. But the company disclosed today that that doesn't appear to be enough for kids ages two to four. The immune response they saw with two doses didn't stack up with the comparison group of teens and young adults. While they did see 
strong results in even younger ages, 6 to 24 months, Pfizer's now adding a third dose to the series to see if that can provide high levels of protection across the board. The third dose will be given at least two months after the second. And Pfizer says if the three-dose study is successful, it plans to ask the FDA for clearance in the first half of 2022. That's a delay of a couple months from what many in the public health world and parents we're hoping for. The company is also testing third doses in all other age groups up through 17, suggesting the additional dose will provide stronger protection against variants including Omicron, perhaps the first steps to making this a three-dose vaccine across the board. Okay, the first thing that I was stuck st- stuck by, struck by, stuck, yeah. <laughs> anyway, got uh, vaccines in the, in the head now. <laughs> yeah. Um, First thing that I was struck by was the uh, disappointing news from the trials. It looks like it looks like those vaccines are going to be delayed for the under fives. The under fives. And <laughs> what I thought was like, instead of it seems like it should be, you know, it's a good thing that we do trials. Yeah. Like, we should be happy the trials were done and when now we know there's a problem before we just start sticking kids. Yeah, right. <laughs> but instead, it's disappointing news. Yeah. And, of course, uh, you know, the girl ends it with um, that, uh, you know, this disappointing news for, for parents. Not that many, it seems, because only about uh, one out of six parents is getting their kid, their young, under 11. Under, yeah. Or under 12, I guess. 11 and under. Yeah. Um, the vaccine as it is. Yeah. So um, it, it doesn't seem like it's going to upset that many parents. Right. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. What what was your what were your first thoughts on this? I just, just basically like what you said. I mean, I just, I, I just can't get over that anybody would be willing to, even if you're on board and think that, that it's okay for you to get it, mm-hmm. to, to give it to, especially you're talking about kids under five. I mean, are you kidding me? Yeah. Man? Well, the, yeah. Um, the, the testing looked good for six months to 24 months. Can you imagine? Oh man. Can, all right. Like <laughs> I, I'm, it's hard not to criticize parents sometimes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> can you imagine Submitting your six month to twenty four month old child for a, a trial the of trial? this vaccine? Night, Can man. you even imagine that? Yeah. Like, okay, you don't know what'll happen. Sure, try it on my <laughs> my twelve month old. Yeah, right. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Oh, hopefully, man. it'll protect him. Hopefully, uh, yeah. Hopefully, like, but we'll know. I guess we'll see, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean, I'm just I I I can't understand what's going on, and I mean, you have to be seriously terrified of what you have been really badly affected by the media in this thing to think that, that, that you would want to do that. I would think, I mean, I I just, I can't even get into the head (laughs) of somebody who thinks that it's less risky at this point and less risky to give their under two year old up yeah. for a trial of this vaccine than to just take their chances with the virus in a six month to 24 months. Oh yeah. I mean, I just, and I, I get the whole like, well, for the greater good or whatever, like, cause I mean, that would be the argument for the other side, right? Yeah. Well, yeah like, you know, well, somebody has got to be the, the first to go and mm-hmm. you know, we're willing to make that dude. I just can't imagine with either of my kids ever being like, all right, you know, I'll let them be the fir- the guinea pig. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just, there's no way, man. Like, yeah. I, Well, it, it's very different to, you know, to me or I probably to us just generally as libertarians. Um, there's a huge difference between having a child that's old enough to volunteer well, yeah. Uh, and not. And I don't mean like somebody who's 18 or older. I mean, yeah. you know, a, a child who can understand enough about what's going on to make the decision for themselves. Me and you discussed this the other night because mm-hmm. I, I had said the same thing. Like if, if my kids, if one of my kids was like, had had really made the decision that the vaccine was the right thing to do and that's what they were going to do, mm-hmm. even given how I feel about it, I wouldn't stand in their way. Yeah. I mean, I would try to convince them to 
see things the way I do. Mm -hmm. But if they don't, then I mean, it's their decision. And I mean that for both of my kids who are 12 and 17. Yeah. Um, I mean, I would let them make that decision at that age mm -hmm. um, if that's truly what they wanted to do. But now you're talking about under five. <laughs> Like, there's yeah. no way, man. Yeah. And the twelve year old skirting it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. like I Do you <laughs> really trust her to make decisions for herself? Yeah. Exactly. Um well and the you know, the other part, of course, was uh uh bad news in the two to four year olds. It's not getting the kind of protection that we th that that measures up to the kind of protection that's happening in older age groups. Um, you know, we think that, uh, if we add a third dose that that'll fix this, um, this is bad news, of course, cause it delays everything. It's not bad news for Pfizer. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Pfizer gets to charge for a third dose now. Yep. Yep. Now, and I, I know there's a whole bunch of people out there, hopefully not a lot of people listening to our podcast that think yeah. this way, but I know that there's a bunch of people out there that are saying, well, the vaccines are free. Yeah. No, you're paying for it. Oh, you're paying the, for that. The government's paying $30 a pop or something like that to Pfizer for these things. Oh, yeah. Um, like, Pfizer's getting their money. Oh, yeah. They're, they're not giving this out out of the goodness of their hearts. Yeah, right. Um, and uh, so when they, when they talk about Pfizer thinks that the answer is to give a third dose... Well, I guess they do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, um, and then, you know, we go back to begging the question. The assumption is that the vaccines work. So if the vaccine's not working, it's because you hadn't had enough of it yet. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, uh, sorry for those of you that already listened to part of the problem, yeah. but um, Robbie Bernstein on part of the problem was talking at, as a salesperson. Yeah. Former salesperson, something. Anyway, as a sales guy, what he's learned from the pandemic. Yeah. And uh, he said, well, what I've learned is that if my product isn't working, it's because you haven't had, had enough of it yet. Yeah. <laughs> and if it continues to not work, then it's because of all the other people who haven't bought my product. Yeah, right. <laughs> my medicine won't work because you didn't take yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it, it sounds absurd that way, but that's exactly how this has been presented by these yeah. vaccine companies. Oh, absolutely. Like, well, it's not doing what you promised. Well, that's because it turns out that you need more of it for it to work that way. Hmm. Oh, you had more and it's still not working. Well, it's because of all those people that didn't get the yeah. vaccine that yeah. it's not working for you. Yeah, right. Um, and, and it just sounds absurd when you when you say it the way Robbie Bernstein did, but that's kind of the point, right? Like, yeah. it is absurd. It is absurd, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and and then, of course, in this case, like the the good news as far as they're concerned is at the end, well, it looks like we're going to make this a three-dose vaccine across the board. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yay. So, which is what they wanted all along. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no end. Well, yeah. I mean, ideally. I mean, they're already talking about a fourth booster. Yeah. For the people who've been full, who, for the early adopters, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, and of course, at the at the start of the this not working quite like expected. Yeah. Um, it was like, okay, well it's two doses and then, then you may need a booster. Yeah. And then it's like, well, it's two, it's going to be two doses and a booster for it to work. Yeah. Well, then they're saying, well, it's, a, it's, it's not a booster. You just need three doses. It's a three dose vaccine. And now it's like, well, you might need three doses and a booster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, kind of like, where does it end? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, I, I heard stories that some of the European health passes, uh, have space for like six or seven <laughs> shots, uh, wow. like stamps for shots for like six or seven spaces. Yeah. Like that's what they're anticipating already. Wow. And we just, I mean, regardless of how you feel about the, the vaccine itself, you want the vaccine, you think that it's worthwhile, go get it. I don't, yeah. I'm not stopping you. I don't. Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> well, that's been my position. Um, but I mean, well, so, and that's always been my position too. I do want people to really understand what they're getting into because oh, they're yeah. only getting one side of the story well, from yeah. mainstream media. Yeah. Um, like these these stories out of the VAERS database, these uh, doctors that are getting shut down that are opposed to it, mm -hmm. like. The, these things are real and they have good reasons and they're good doctors. It's not a bunch of quacks that are out there. I mean, I'm sure yeah. there's some quacks out there too, yeah. but what you have is you have practicing docs or doctors in a lot of cases here. You have practicing doctors 
um, speaking out against the vaccine and they're being opposed by public health officials yeah. who are doctors, but they're not doctors, doctors, you yeah. know, like, like I said, well, you know, a doctor that I was talking to told me, um, point blank that Fauci has never been a practicing doctor. Yeah. He's, he's never seen a patient. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, and that those well, people are making, he sits in front of a computer and runs models and the, uh, something else. Actually, he doesn't even do that. He like pays somebody else to do that. And they put reports on his desk. Yeah. Something else though, that that's a real problem with this whole situation is, is you have practicing doctors who are, who are, who have their questions or, or, you know, mm -hmm. um, aren't really fully on board here, but they can't really speak out either because when they do, they end up ostracized by that, by everybody else. Yeah. Like they can't even really make a true decision for themselves because they know what the consequences are for that. Right. A, a, a difference in opinion could mean their career. Yeah. You know, and they might still have a hundred thousand dollars in, in, in med school. Debt. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Although, you know, with Biden, there's a possibility that'll get forgotten. Yeah, forgetting, we'll, so, you know. we hadn't done it yet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And we should talk about that'll that. That'll be sometime. another podcast sometime. Yeah, yeah. We'll definitely talk about that. Um, so, I mean, I don't have anything more on this. I, I just, I, I really am tired of talking about COVID, but can't get away from it because it's still news. Yeah. It's still important news because it is directly affecting the quality of your life. Yeah, yeah. Everybody. Not, <laughs> not the virus. Yeah. The, but the, the government response. reaction to yeah. it. The response to the virus. And yeah. so, and it's... You know, it's an infringing government that uh, even though Biden doesn't care about your freedom, you should. Yeah, right. It's not his job to. It's our job to. Yeah. <laughs> it's our job to show him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, the we, you know, we can't just let this go yeah. because there will always be some kind of emergency that's a reason to take your freedom away further. Yep. Every time. I mean, the terror war showed that. And now this is it's doing the same thing. Yeah. Yep. And it'll be climate change next. Yep. Oh, they're already cooking that one up. Oh, I know. I know. And it's, well, some we're, other time. We're going to do a podcast on climate change. Yeah, I it'll have, happen. Um, I, I lost a clip that I really wanted to play on our next climate change podcast, and yeah. I don't know what I did with it. I can't find it anywhere. I'm going to have to, like, backtrack and find it in the original. Yeah. Um, and that could be tough. <laughs> it yeah. could be tough. I'm pretty sure I can find the... Um, the show where I, I heard it originally, and I may even be able to find the episode without too much trouble. Yeah. Then I'm going to have to listen to the whole thing, which is like <laughs> an hour and 20 minutes or something like that to find it because I have no idea where in there <laughs> it said. would be. And yeah. even, you know, even finding the episode might be difficult, but they don't put out a lot of episodes. So, I, I mean, there's not, there aren't a lot of episodes. They only run about half the year and they uh -huh. only put out an episode every two weeks or something anyway. So it shouldn't. Anyway, and it was in the, I think it was in the last season. Might have been in the season before, <laughs> still. But I, yeah. I will find it before we, I, before I, we I will, do that episode. Yeah, yeah, have to, yeah. have to. It's, it's, it's very relevant, Absolutely. Um, even though it's a historical climate commentary. <laughs> but, all right, um, cops. Yeah, so um, I was watching the news the other night, the local news um, around here. And like they're so mobile, they're really getting a tough on crime, which I actually saw another report since we talked, um, basically reinforcing the kind of same type of stuff, but um, really tough on crime in mobile right now. Um, and so part of what they're doing with their tough on crime initiative is um, setting up roadblocks. Uh, and they're not DUI checkpoints because he actually made it clear that that's not what they were doing. Um, and I have my feelings about DUI checkpoints, but this is even worse than mm -hmm. any of that. Mm -hmm. um, because what it is, is it's a driver's license and insurance checkpoint. So they stop you, everybody has to stop and you know how you have to mm -hmm. do that stuff. And what really struck me, which that's all bad enough as far as I'm concerned, but I'm yeah. sure a lot of people listening is like, well, you know, you need to have a driver's license. I'm sure there's people that are thinking that right now, that that's yeah. not that big a deal. By what, the way, uh, the state forcing you to contract for a particular service is fascism. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Um, but what, what really stuck in my crawl was, um, he was very open about yeah, Like, so that's what we're doing. We're checking for driver's license and insurance. 
But that's not really why we're here. We're looking for probable cause to to look in your car and try to find drugs or or um, guns or anything like that. Anything that we think needs to come off the streets. We're that's that's really what the purpose of these stops are for mm -hmm. is to is for probable cause for other things. Yeah. Um, and I was like, wow. Well, that was at least honest. <laughs> you know, but I like it's a terrible violation of the Fourth Amendment. But yeah, yeah, boy, well, but yeah, but I mean, at least he was telling the because I mean, we all know that that's what they're doing when they mm -hmm. have these things, and there he was just putting it right out there in front of you. Yeah, this is what we're trying to do. Yeah. Um. So I, I don't know. I mean, it's just it. It really, I. I I have a real problem with having to when I'm driving down the street somewhere knowing I've got to show my papers. Mm -hmm. Because that's what this is. Is yeah. this is this this is no no different than in Iraq or anywhere else? Like checkpoints to show your papers. Yeah. Well, apparently that's not all it is, though. It's a checkpoint, and while you're digging into your glove box or whatever, getting ready to show your papers, we're peering through your back window and mm -hmm. looking around to see if there's anything, any possible reason that we could come up with to yeah. search your car further. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly. I mean, he was very open about that. Yeah. So. Um, I just, I, I have, I have a real problem with all of it. <laughs> like, yeah. I just, I don't know. I actually, so when, when I hope I, there's strong legal challenges on anything that comes from this. Well, what I, what I was thinking about was I was watching, I was like, man, like, I wish there was something like I could do. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like mm -hmm. there's got to be a way to like push back against this. Yeah. And obviously I wanted to talk about it on the podcast and that's one form of me pushing back against it. But something else that I kind of came up with because during the interview, one of the, uh, the, the lady asked the chief of police, well, you know, a lot of people in the community, um, get scared when they come up on these police checkpoints. Um, because they they have a fear of law enforcement, which she was alluding to, like people of color is what. But she didn't come out and say that. Yeah, but she's also talking about you. But yeah, in reality, <laughs> she's talking about me. Yeah. Um, because yeah, dude, you don't want to get stopped with me. I become yeah, I either become one of two things: a nervous wreck or really difficult for the police to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, so. But yeah, um, so the, and he assured them that, you know, it, as long as you're not doing anything wrong, you got nothing to fear and blah, blah, blah. I hate that argument, by the way. Oh, oh. you don't have to worry about being spied on as long as you're not doing anything yeah. wrong. Well, I mean, that's, that's ultimately, he was like, well, as long as you're not a criminal, as long as you don't have any warrants, as long as you, you've got nothing to fear mm -hmm. as far as being stopped by our law enforcement, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. But, um, but what got me, what, what kind of that drove, I was like, well, you know, it would be interesting if one of the groups, Black Lives Matter would be probably the better one, um, mm. done some kind of protest of these things yeah. where you just like get a whole bunch of people together and just start driving through there. And I'm not saying do anything illegal. I'm just saying not being pleasant as you come through there. And just, just stall. Stall them. Exactly. Back up traffic. Be just... just be very unpleasant on your trip mm -hmm. through there and just be the same person. Just keep going, keep going. A whole group of people just keep going through there yeah. and, and just backing up and, and make a big deal about it. I think that, I mean, I think that's one way to push back against this. Yeah. Like don't have your stuff ready. Yep. Wait for them to ask for things. Be real slow about it. Yep. Um, oh, you know, I thought that my, uh, my registration was in my glove box. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's on the floorboard in the back seat. Hang on a second. Yeah. 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 Or, I mean, I don't know if they can actually cite you for this or not, or just don't have it. Because as I learned the last time I was hit, I was in a car accident. They have all of that anyway. Oh yeah, once no, they, they got run a computer their, in their car, once they run their your plate, they've got it. So if mm -hmm. everybody that drove through there was like, "Oh, I don't have it," then they would pull you off to the side and do a check. Mm -hmm. Is what they would do. Yeah. Um, and just back that up too, like yeah. just that whole you know, every person that comes through just doesn't have any of that stuff. You yeah. know. Um. I, like I say, just a thought, something that, you know, it's not honest to goodness, I, I would consider. It's like, it's, like a, it's like the driving version of a sit-in. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> kind of what I was, was thinking. I was like, you know, it's a good way to protest this, like, what's egregious act mm -hmm. to me. I mean, like, I, I have a real problem with it. I'd, like I said, I don't I know they do this type of thing in Baldwin County. Apparently, mm -hmm. um, 
they have to, at least in Mobile, they have to announce where these checkpoints are at. Mm -hmm. So they had it on the website where these checkpoints were going to be and from when to when. Oh, yeah, great. You can map it then for your plan. Well, that's exactly what I was thinking. I was yeah. like, you know, if they do this in Baldwin County, I would totally be for getting a group of people to go do this with yeah. me. I, I don't know how many people I could convince to go do it, but, you know, mm -hmm. I might could convince a bunch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, so the best thing to, um, depending on how much of your night you're willing to waste. Oh, and I'm willing to waste a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> is to just like pack your car full of stuff. Oh man. Yeah. So if they, if they do decide that they're going to search your car because oh, you're yeah. being such a, like they're trying to punish you by searching your car or whatever. Okay. <laughs> Who's really getting punished yeah, here? <laughs> like, all right. Getting all these boxes out. Oh man. Dude. <laughs> yeah. And the, do the same thing with everybody you convinced to do it with you. Mm -hmm. Like everybody's got just this packed car full of just yeah. like random but Like stuff. piles of paper and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Oh man, like wrapped gifts. Yeah. <laughs> like make them. Or unwrapped <laughs> gifts. Who cares? <laughs> well, no, like make them open your gifts. Oh, like, yeah, that would be <laughs> And then it's just empty boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Make oh, sure man. you got some open dog treats or something. Yeah, so like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like put some dog treats in one of the wrapped gifts. Oh, that would be so great. Then they open it. <laughs> oh, uh, man. Uh, it's for my dog. It's for my dog. I, yeah. <laughs> I always like to watch him open it. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, like your dog did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. Oh, uh, man. We may have to do some planning. I'm excited now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if anybody's interested in this, uh, Dude. you can contact me at Michael at the Liberty Mike. Yes, absolutely. If I hear from enough of you, I'll get. I'll do this. Yeah. Hey, I'm down, man. Like I'm all for it. Uh -huh. How uh, much of my night am I willing to waste? Uh, yeah. You know, what else do I have to do? Dude, we'll plan it out, man. They have to announce those times. I'll take some time off work. I'm ready to go to jail. Shit. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't care. I don't really want to go to jail. But, <laughs> I don't really want to go to jail. But but anything that I went to jail for would be BS anyway. It's, exactly. Uh, so. <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, that was that was kind of my spiel. Yeah. I, so uh, to hit something real of... Uh, well, not that this wasn't, but like more real about this and something that you and I tend to disagree on, um, related. Yeah. Uh, so I don't like DUI checkpoint. I, you said that you don't really either, but I don't, um, um I, I, at least a DUI checkpoint <clears throat> though, at least there's a justification for it. I disagree. I mean, I, I <laughs> so yeah, yeah that's I, where I disagree. All right. So here's, um, actually I, I got this from Lou Rockwell and I hadn't thought about this in this way, although I have certainly made Im impassioned statements about being opposed to um, DUI laws just because I think it's pre-crime. Yeah. Like, there, it's it's already a crime if you do some damage. Yeah. Um, and to arrest you because you have the possibility of doing some damage. And the truth is that you don't... I mean, there has been plenty of reason um, to suggest that being really tired is yeah. just as dangerous that being upset, like if you just got in a fight with your spouse or something, yeah. is just as dangerous. I mean, like there's a lot of other things. Fooling with the radio can be just <laughs> as dangerous. Um, and so uh, there's, you know, I would say that it, it is certainly not settled that uh, driving under the influence, especially as they keep pushing the blood alcohol level down, 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 yeah. um, is any more dangerous than a bunch of other things that you could be doing while driving. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but Lou, uh, I was reading some Lou Rockwell and he was talking about that. How can anything be a crime that they have to give you a test to find out if you had committed the crime? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> like I, if they can't, that's, <laughs> I, I get that. I get where, I get where you go coming from with that. Yeah. Like I, I do. I just, in as, as someone who was hit by a drunk driver and mm -hmm. who has lost family members hit by drunk drivers, I mean, it's that's something that you can easily not do yeah. and know you're not going to impact somebody's life. Yeah. Well, there's, that's true of a lot of things, uh, once again, yeah. Yeah. that aren't crimes. I, and so let me also add this. I am not opposed to um, cops stopping you because you're swerving around, determining yeah. that you're drunk and not letting you drive home. Yeah. Um, you know, taking you home, even, even taking you to jail, you know, they had the drunk tanks back in the old days, Yeah. but in the morning you got lit out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and gave in your life and let the, keep your license so you can go do it again. Well, sure. But I mean, you also like, again, it's a crime that 
I get the fact that it's, that it's a crime You're, you haven't committed yet. The problem I have mm. is, like, if it was some minor crime that nobody was going to have, even if it was a minor crime that you only looked at property damage, mm -hmm. I could... I could get by with every everything you're claiming. The problem I have is when you get behind the wheel and you're drunk, you have a strong likelihood of ending somebody else's life. That's not, I would say that that's not necessarily true either, that you have a strong likelihood of ending I, somebody's life. Depending, depending, on home, the, depending on the situation. Now, granted, the guy that's had, the guy that's had the one or two drinks, yeah, like I get that. And I get, I don't, I'm not for pushing the alcohol level down and down and down. Like I have a problem with that. Okay. But, so, but uh, the guy that's clearly drunk, mm -hmm. that's, that's just like completely trashed and jumps behind the wheel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe they get home most of the time, but the one time they don't, they end somebody else's life. That's not okay. They don't necessarily end somebody else's no, life. They could just they, hit a tree. Or yeah. Or they could just end their own life. Well, that, but, that's their problem. What, no one wishes to be protected either in his person or his property against himself. That's like I, and fair. I'm and I'm good with that. Like I have a problem with seatbelt laws mm -hmm. for just that reason because yeah. the only person in your home with not wearing a seatbelt is yourself, and I mm -hmm. think you've got every right to make that decision. Um, but with the DUI, it's just different because you're not only are you putting your life in danger, you're putting everybody on the road's life in danger. You're putting everybody in the neighborhood's life in danger by having a pool. Yeah, but that's potentially. But yeah, potentially. But still, though, like it's like and worse, the people that you're putting in most danger is like toddlers. Yeah. Well, put up a fence. <laughs> I mean, so, yeah, I don't see it as being different to me. You are arresting somebody for the potential of causing damage. Um, and it's, you know, to bring it back to the COVID thing, it's like when they say, uh, well, you know, getting the vaccine prevents you from getting a more serious illness. Now, there may be some data to suggest that uh, more people have serious illness that haven't been vaccinated than have been vaccinated. But you're making a bunch of assumptions about how serious an illness would have been. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That aren't necessarily <laughs> true. Yeah. Well, and once again, the only person you're putting in danger by not getting the vaccines yourself. No, Which that's is, not true. You can spread it to other people. Well, you can still spread it with the vaccine, too. No, that's not true. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're that's wanna... not what they're telling us. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that's that's the uh, truth. But you, you see my point, though. I do. I, like, I, I, I get all of that. It's yeah. just to... And I, I, I understand. It, it's a, it's a, I have a lot of problems because, like, I'm not... I'm not a fan of the police and I'm not mm -hmm. a fan of government and mm -hmm. all of these things, but there, well, th there's the enforcement problem too. It creates well, proactive that's, policing that's my problem, that ends up with the, antagonistic interactions between people that wouldn't have happened otherwise. And I have a problem with all of that, especially when you're talking about roadblocks. Yeah. Well, and I'm not for roadblocks either. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, uh, I mean, I'm, I, it's a tough, it's a tougher thing for me mm -hmm. to kind of, to hash out, mm -hmm. but I'm not okay with DUI checkpoints either. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, I would be just as willing to go protest DUI checkpoints as I would be driver's license checkpoints. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, I'm not okay with, with the checkpoints, but I wonder what percentage of people that are pulled over, that get DUIs are pulled over because they were doing something that indicated that they were drunk. Well, I, I mean, I, my wife, uh, so it's been quite a few months back now, but, um, my wife, me and my wife were stopped. Um, and they, and, now, granted, I don't know if she hit the line or not, mm -hmm. but the she was stopped, and the reason for the stop was because he said that she hit the white line, um, come pulling out of a gas station or something. Isn't and it like soccer where you can get on the line, you just can't go? Across can't, can't cross it. Yeah, yeah. maybe so. Yeah. I don't know. He didn't give her a ticket, and he didn't do anything. Now, I was drunk. <laughs> like yeah. we had, we were leaving somebody's house mm -hmm. or something. That's, but she was remember. driving. But she was driving. And she was not drunk. But it was mm -hmm. what he was doing. It was a fishing expedition, and that's exactly when we left. I was like, "That's Liberty a, Larry's wife does not drink, by the way." For those yeah, of you yeah. in the she audience, she was. She was. She. She hadn't. She hadn't had anything to drink. But he, she, mm -hmm. he pulled her over um, to to as just to kind of see what was going on in the car it was mm -hmm. a fishing expedition yeah what it was and if it went much further may i may would have ended in jail because i was plenty intoxicated mm -hmm. and plenty not in the mood yeah <laughs> well i got pulled over leaving your house one time years ago yeah um that was just a fishing expedition clearly like i yeah. hadn't been doing anything like he was like you know why i pulled you over i was like i got no idea yeah yeah um and i had had a couple of drinks yeah, yeah. I, I probably wasn't drunk leaving your house. i'm in fact i'm sure that i wasn't i've been there for a while and yeah. i had a, like a couple of whiskey drinks over three hours or yeah. whatever but um anyway i mean it was enough to make me nervous though well yeah uh and uh and he was like oh well you were speeding back there 
Um, and it was like right after I'd gotten on the highway from leaving your, your, uh, side street. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I couldn't have gotten up to the speed that, <laughs> that he, claimed he claimed that I was yeah. in, in the time period before it changed to a higher speed limit anyway. Yeah. I was yeah. like, that's just not true. I mean, I didn't argue with him obviously, <laughs> right. but I was like, that's just not true. Yeah. He stopped me because he was just seeing. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So that, that goes on all the time anyway. Okay. So... But that would be okay is if they, they just stop to see and they find out that somebody has, is over 0.08. See, I would have a problem with that. I mean, All right, so, so you're running into these weird limits. Like, I don't know how you can support this. Like, Yeah, but because the, there's a difference between somebody It's who's, relative anyway. There's a difference um, between somebody who's had one or two drinks a couple of hours ago mm-hmm. and ate a meal in between. Yeah. And there's a difference between somebody that's literally been at the bar all night doing nothing but drinking and yeah. getting behind the wheel... And but here's another thing that there's a difference between a guy, a guy who's been at the bar all night drinking um, and hadn't done anything else. And he does that every night. Yeah. And a guy that's been at the bar all night drinking that only oh, does that every once in a while. Believe there's me, a difference between those people. I've too. rode with plenty of those people that that did that every night. Mm-hmm. And granted, they're good at it. Yeah. Until they're not. Well, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like, I, because I've rode in those cars, man. I know, like, I've drove, I've been like, yeah, dude, this is dangerous as yeah, hell. Yeah, I had a friend in college that could be falling down drunk, and you could put him behind the wheel, and he was fine. My Drove of, fine. Yeah, my ex-father-in-law was that way. Like, mm-hmm. I rode with him so many nights. There's where also he was, people that know that they're a little intoxicated and drive more carefully because of that. Yeah, well, and... But that's kind of the line where they're a little intoxicated versus somebody that's that's clearly a danger to society. Yeah, I, I think that you've run into this like heavily subjective thing, and so making a law out of it is just dangerous. Well, I'm not a big fan of laws. <laughs> like anybody that knows, I, I mean, you I know. think this might be a blind spot for you. I'll yeah, keep working on you. Maybe I keep, mean, I, keep hope, trying, man. <laughs> hopefully, this has at least been an interesting discussion for people to yeah. close out the podcast. Because I mean, I think this is a tough time. one. I think this is a tough one for a lot of libertarians because I think mm-hmm. there's a lot of libertarians that are where I'm at. Yeah. Um, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm in the minority you here. Are. I don't know about that. <laughs> I, 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 I'd be interested to find out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Um, uh, okay. Well, we're already pushing an hour. Actually, we're going to be over an hour um, with the clips. But, uh, okay, so what about weed? Well, weed's a different scenario. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it well, is. All right. Because what about cocaine? What about things that you can't test for right there on the road? Well, I don't have a problem with any of them. None of those, I feel like, impairs your driving the way alcohol does. Like, alcohol is just a more imperative heroin. substance. Well, heroin is maybe a little different. But I, like, I'm pretty sure if you can manage to get behind the wheel on heroin, <laughs> that you probably shouldn't be. <laughs> well, I, that's, I mean, I would say that that's true probably of most of those drugs. But yeah. um, the, the point being, well, it comes back to Lou Rockwell's thing. Like, yeah. if you have to test somebody to find out if they've broken the law, then it's probably not a good law. Well, I, actually, what I would argue as far as that goes is I'm not really advocating for if you need to, if you need to be tested and you broke the law. Mm-hmm. Like, most of the scenarios I'm describing to you, you can pretty well tell. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, if somebody's had too much to drink and they're driving, you don't need a test to know. Yeah, but we already talked about, uh, you know, just fishing expeditions that find people and so forth. And, yeah. and you know, you while well, you weren't on board with it, you weren't opposed exactly either. No. Um, I mean, now I'm okay with things like reckless endangerment or something like that. Yeah. Like, you see somebody swerving around on the road. I don't know that it matters if they're drunk or not. Yeah. Right? Like, it's, I mean, that's... So, I so mean, if you're talking about that kind of scenario, you don't need a DUI law. Yeah. I don't know if we, I've told you the story of the night I, um, or on the podcast, I know you know the story, mm. but the night I got hit, the, um, uh, a buddy of mine had actually called the guy in cause yeah. he was swerving all over the road and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And, um, when I called my buddy to tell him, you know, I had been hit or whatnot, like it was like, yeah, I found the car you turned in. Like, yeah. It was <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. So you don't need a DUI law for that. Yeah, Maybe. Uh, it's again, you know, there's laws that cover that kind of, of reckless endangerment. Reckless endangerment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe. I, I don't know. 
I'm still not convinced. Right. But but you're do you're getting there. I feel like I feel like I'm I'm at least reeling you more towards my side, maybe. I don't know. Is that what you feel? <laughs> uh, that's how okay. I feel. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. I don't um, know. All right. Well, uh we'll um let's see. We there may be a bonus episode, it kinda depends. Uh in between now and next week. Um if well, either way, Merry Christmas to everybody. Absolutely. Uh, We're not gonna Talk to you before then, right? Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Uh, th- yeah. I'm almost definitely no. I can act, no, not even yeah. almost. Yeah, I'm you, definitely yeah. not because I am tied up. I was doing good to get here tonight. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm. I. I may get another episode out. It depends on. Uh, we we may have a, uh, a uh, you know a special guest for another episode, um, before on Christmas. <laughs> Maybe uh, we'll see. Uh, if so, that'd be fantastic. And I'll just Absolutely. wish you Merry Christmas again. Um, but uh, yeah, hope everybody has a, uh, a safe and happy holiday. Um, get vaccinated, everyone. <laughs> That's uh, our message, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Isn't that clear? Hadn't that been clear? That we've made right. it so clear. Yeah. Um, and uh, if I don't talk to you before then, um, we plan to be back here on New Year's Eve Eve. Oh, yeah, I guess not. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's directly next. <laughs> so then we can really talk about DUI laws. Uh, we can have this discussion again for all <laughs> yeah. I can. I should have just held off till then. I, it <laughs> seemed like such an appropriate moment, though, to bring it in because, yeah. oh, well. Anyway, um, in the meantime, uh, follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube. Um, like and share. Uh, there's always the website, thelibertymike.com. Um and if you have, so if you agree with me, uh, if you're a libertarian that that agrees with DUI laws, why don't you shoot Mike an email? Yeah, uh, Michael <laughs> like, at the Liberty Mike. I, I'd, I'd appreciate that. <laughs> you can set up a poll on the Facebook page, right? I can. I think I can. You know that they may have taken that function away. I can try. No, I, I think that the oh yeah, I don't know whether they've taken the function away. I remember we had trouble before, but it was because there was multiple answers and you can only pick two but this is just two this is just two we this can... is a, this is a binary Absolutely. on off that's that's <laughs> your only options yep. um yeah consistency or not consistency <laughs> yeah, right. oh yeah is that how, <laughs> that how you want to frame it mike <laughs> well i mean you know just just being honest yeah um all right yeah so uh otherwise uh and yeah look out for that poll because i'd be interested to see what people think of this too me too um and uh, we'll be back in a week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Later.